When it's robbery, it's, wa- it's robbery, so it's smoke. Man. Like I, I, ain't, I don't know the history too much, but just know we came with red in the facility, so we don't tolerate no red. And them boys in the red and white, when they come down here, they gotta get the visit. Even cities. though you guys don't know about this robbery that much, you've been in robbery games in, in your career. Yeah. So is there something different about robbery games that like you feel something different this week? Yeah, it's a different feeling. Like you just know, like everybody. Everybody take this one like real serious. Like this, this the game that everybody want to win. So if we could play a thousand games, we could go to uh, bowl games, all of that. But this rivalry game, like even hearing from like fans and stuff, they like, I don't care if y'all lose a hundred games, as long as y'all beat Nebraska, y'all y'all will be good. So like I know people out here they take this one serious. So us as players, we gotta take it just as serious as them. A rivalry is a rivalry, so it don't matter who we playing. We gotta treat them all the same. Really, every game to me is a robbery. Yeah. Xavier said that he almost feels like he needs to do a little homework on, yeah. on the past of it. Is that is that something that yeah. do you like become curious to look back into the, Most definitely the history of it and see why the fans hate each other? And yeah. that sort of stuff? Most definitely, I gotta do my research and <laughs> learn learn more so I can just add add a little extra hate in my heart. <laughs> you know? We heard Xavier's um, um, Weaver's perspective on you guys working together, coming from USF and having that amazing game against TCU. How are you feeling after the game and just sharing that moment with him and just knowing how far you guys have come? Like after the game, after the game, man, Zay, we shared a couple of tears. So, you know, we've been in college. Zay been in college for like five years. I've been in college for three years. My whole college career, I've been losing. So it felt good just to have a win. And then plus at this level with all the doubters and all the haters and stuff like that, it felt good. Like, just know like it's more to come. But at the end of the day, we're not satisfied with that. It's still more to come. Along those lines, you know, Coach talked about turning the page from the big win. How have you gone about that process as you've gotten back to work this week? Say that again. Turning the page from a big win, focusing on the next foe. How have you kind of done that process oh, this week? Like you got to put put it put it behind you. Don't let it get get to our head. We get the big head. Now we can't get no big head. We got to stay mental, stay stay solid, and know what we are here for. Were you surprised at all that after TCU kept responding, and responding, and responding, you guys just hung in there, showed a lot of boys? And- uh, honestly, I really wasn't surprised because I could we do the same thing in practice. Like, we make big plays, defense lock us up sometimes. We, we make good plays on defense, so it's probably surprising to y'all, but it wasn't surprising to me because we do this every day at practice. Once you got here and you kind of worked with Shador a little bit, were you hitting up Zay being like, hey, this QB is nice? Honestly, I mean, you know, me and Shador, we kind of already go back, so I already knew Shador was nice from the, from the get go in high school when I was supposed to go to Jackson State with him. But yeah, I was telling Zay like Shador, he got a good arm, like he real accurate. And I was telling y'all like a long time ago that Shador accurate. I don't know if that people ain't believe it. They thought I was just talking, but he he's really good. On your touchdown, it seemed like there was some impro- improvisation there. You kind of broke off and went to the em- empty space. How did that kind of relationship with Shador build throughout the offseason? Just kind of knowing where to go when a play breaks down like that. Uh, it just scramble drill. Whichever way the quarterback go, I just run that way. Was it still a touchdown if he hit the post? Yeah. I was wide open on the post too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how close were you and Xavier at uh, USF? We was real close. Like after my freshman year, we had got tighter. Like when I first got there, my freshman year, um, we weren't as close, but we was close. Like our receiver room, we used to do like this thing called six nine. We just talk about each other's life and our mental health and check up on each other, and uh, that made us real close as well with other receivers that was there too. Talk to me about the importance of keeping a presence on social media. I know that you're very active on there as well, yeah. and just like you have all your handles on your roster, on the roster yeah. as well. Uh, like social media, it's just a spot to like express yourself and people to like see a different side of you and stuff like that. Like share pictures that that you think look good to yourself. <laughs> it's just like it's just like a moment on social media, just feeling yourself. So sometimes I might be feeling myself, so I might go live. Might get a haircut, might go live just because I'm feeling myself, but I know my girlfriend would get mad at me though. <laughs> yeah. What do you talk about on your lives? Uh, really, I just be listening to music. Oh, there's yeah, a beat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, it's just whatever I'm doing, I'm just on live. But it kind of helps you build your brand, right? Yeah. Continue because you've been doing it probably since high school. Yeah, and make sure other school. schools look at you. And the views went up, though. I can tell you that. <laughs> the views did go up. Especially after the game. I was going to say, speaking of that, you got like LeBron and Mahomes and guys, everyone's A-list was tweeting about you. Is that, that, how, does that blow your mind? Like, they know you and they want to see you. Yeah, it's, it's, it blows my mind because in the 
million years, in a million years, I'd have never imagined that I'd be in this situation. Like coach always say, like when we was about six years old, we always dreamed of like having this moment in our life. So I'm actually living my dreams, but I ain't done yet. Are you America's team? And I'm America's team. Is this America's team? The Bucks? It gotta be. Gotta Why? be. Why? We, we, how, how, how could I say we popping right now? <laughs> but every, like everybody, popping. every everybody like. I feel like we America's team, but it's still like doubters out there that want to see us fail. It, you got people out there that's like, I told you so. Like we're the lose. Like ain't no help. We not losing. But uh, like we were to lose or something like that. You have those people out there like I told you. They might say that game was luck or something, but really that's all still. Like we've been doing this since since count. Nationally ranked too. Hasn't happened around here in a while. Yeah, that I ain't never been nationally ranked in my life besides <laughs> high school, but. It feels good to be national rank in college football. Does that change the vibe at all around here? How yeah. do you feel about that? I mean, everybody feel good, but I, I could tell, like, we're not letting it get to our head. Like, we nationally ranked. Like, I didn't even know it was nationally ranked until I looked on IG and seen it. But other than that, everybody just been on, like, some chill stuff, and we just been locked in on our football level. Jimmy, you guys talk a lot, but you back it up on the field. It seems like there's an old school work ethic there. Do you think this team is maybe more mature than others you play on? Uh... I mean, we got a young team. It's still some maturity that isn't there, but at, overall, we, we're a mature team. Like, when it's time for football, everybody locked in. In the locker room, people go play around. Like, that's everywhere you go. So where does the confidence come from? Uh, preparation. Confidence comes from preparation. When you're doing a, a, a million, the same reps over a million times, you, you should know what to expect from Brett. Oh, sorry, go last one. Brett, Brett said he expects to see a little more zone from Nebraska this weekend. How much of that do you think is is going forward this season after TCU played a lot of man against you guys and you were able to sort of beat up on them. Teams are just aware of that now yeah. and, and you're just naturally going to see more zone, more uh, off coverage. Well, like, depending on, like, the players they got on their team, yeah. it depends. It's like trust with, like, like your DBs. Like, if they, they probably might not trust their DBs as much. So they, they'll run more zone than, like, TCU, they, they trust their DBs, so they run a lot of man. But this team, you're going to see more, like, double cloud, uh, like, temple two. Temple 2 and Double Cloud almost the same thing. But it, you won't see too much, man, besides like third down or something like that. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it.